In this video, we'll create a beautiful fantasy composite. If you've ever had your head stuck in the clouds, then this one's for you. Let's get started. If you'd like to follow along with me, you can find the exercise files in the video description. This picture will be our starting point. I really like the colors that we have here in the sky, and I also really like the stars and these mountains. I think this will be the perfect backdrop. Now, what I have in mind for this image is to create a surreal scene where we have a subject here and the subject is sitting on a dock. Instead of being surrounded by water, I want to have the subject surrounded by clouds. With the subject being surrounded by clouds, it will look like our subject is floating in the sky. To make this feel more dreamlike, I really want to play up the colors in this image. I want to have beautiful blue shadows, and I want to have pink highlights. You can already see these colors in the background image, so I really want to play up those colors and incorporate them throughout the whole image. Oh, and as one more detail, I want to add a crescent moon to the sky. I'll go ahead and rename this pixel layer Plan. And then I'll turn that off for now. So up here, I have our image of the clouds that we're going to use for this image. I really like how the clouds look kind of like rolling waves. It fits very nicely with the theme of this image. So I'm going to bring this image into our main document. I'll press Command or Control C to copy it. Then Command or Control V to paste it in. I want these clouds to be a bit larger in our image. So I'm going to grab the Move tool and then increase the size of the clouds. Now with those clouds placed in the image and at the size that we'd like, I'm now going to gradually remove some of the clouds to reveal the night sky. To do this, I'm going to first add a mask by clicking on the mask icon. Then with our mask selected, I'm going to grab the paintbrush tool so that we can paint on our mask to remove the clouds. I'm going to press D to get my colors back to default black and white. And I'm also going to fully lower the hardness of my paintbrush. That way we have a nice soft edged brush. I'll use the bracket keys on my keyboard to increase the size of my brush. And now I can go ahead and remove the clouds from the night sky. I want the clouds to end about there in the middle of the mountains. Now, right now, the clouds look a bit too fuzzy because we've removed some of the clouds. The reason that I like working with masks is that you can always remove and add the clouds back by switching your colors between black and white. If you press X on your keyboard, then you can easily switch between the black and white colors. So now with my paint color set to white, I can paint to add back in some of the clouds. And by using a smaller brush, you can see that it looks like I have a bit more control over the edges of the clouds. They don't look quite as fuzzy and I can really decide which parts of the clouds stay and which parts I get rid of. All right, I think these edges are looking really nice. Now that we've easily added in the clouds to the scene, Let's check in with the lighting and colors of the clouds. So first, to match our background better, I want the shadows within these clouds to be a bit darker. And I think making these bright highlights a little bit darker would make this look more natural as well. So I'm going to go to my adjustments and I'll add a levels adjustment. 
Then I'm going to click and drag this down and to the right of our cloud layer so that this is only affecting our clouds. All right, so first I want to darken up these shadows. I'm going to use the black level slider to do this. You can see as I bring this over, more and more of the dark shadows become even darker. I'm going to bring this over to around 15%. And you can see that's about at the point where the white part of our histogram is ended. So before, the shadows looked really dull because we weren't matching up with the shadow end of our histogram, but now that looks a lot more natural. Next, I want to decrease the highlights. You can see that they look extremely bright, and with this being nighttime, I don't think they should be quite so bright. So to make the highlights darker, I'm going to go to our output white level, and this just doles down highlights. So I'm going to bring this down to around 98%. I don't want to do too much damage to the highlights, but I do think doling them down a little bit looks pretty nice. So now you can see the before and after of adjusting those clouds. Next, I want to check in with our colors. I'm going to add an HSL adjustment. And I'll make sure that's also set as a child layer to our clouds. I'm just going to increase the saturation. I think around 15% looks pretty good for this. I really want to play up the colors in this image, so I think that looks really nice. With that finished, I'm going to rename this layer. This looks great so far. So next, I'm going to add in our subject. So here's the image that I chose for our subject. I like that this dock has nice straight edges, so that should be pretty easy to select. And the subject here is very dark on a light background, so that should be an easy selection as well. I'm going to copy this by pressing Command or Control C, and then I'll come back to our main document, so I can press Command or Control V to paste it in. I'm going to grab the Move tool, and I'm just going to center this. And now we can go ahead and make a selection of the dock. I'm going to use the Selection Brush tool to do this. Make sure that you have Snap to Edges and Soft Edges turned on for this. Then I'll go ahead and zoom in so that I can make our selection. So clicking once is pretty easy to select the subject here. And now I'm just going to click and drag to select the rest of the dock. If you select a little too much like I just did over here, you can hold down Alt or Option on your keyboard and then click and drag to remove those areas. All right, with that selection made, I'm going to press on the mask icon, which will remove the background. Then I'll press Command or Control D to deselect. I'm going to grab the Move tool, and then we can go ahead and move this subject in place. So with the dock layer selected, I'm going to increase its size. And I think I'll bring it to about there. I want our subject to be sticking out into the middle of the document, but I don't want the subject to stick out too far. I think this is a nice balance, still having some clouds and mountain overhead. So with that done, our next step is to adjust the light and colors of our subject layer. So let's start with the lighting. I'll go to my adjustments and add another levels adjustment. And this time I'll click and drag it down and to the right of our dock layer. So for this part of the image, our subject looks very dark. You can see that our subject is definitely the darkest part of the image. So I'd like to lighten up the darks. And to do that, I'll come down to our output black level. And you can see as I drag this over, it's just making the darks look less intense. I'll bring this to around 11%. I think I also want to brighten the highlights. We have very bright highlights on the clouds and the highlights here aren't quite so bright. 
So I'll go to our white level slider and I'm just going to bring this over and I think around 93% looks pretty good for that. So now you can see the before and after of just making this less dark. And now let's look at our colors. So there are definitely some weird colors in the dock. You can kind of see right here we have some bluish green. And we even have a bit of orange going on over here. So even though the dock looks very gray and unsaturated, you can still see that we have a few strange colors in here. That's not quite right for this image. I'm going to really dig into our colors now by adding a curves adjustment. Using the curves, we can go to the individual color channels to address the different colors that are here. So I'm going to start with the red channel and I'll grab the picker. Then I can click and drag directly on our dock image to add or take away some of the red. I'm going to drag upward to increase the reds. You can see that as I increase the reds, it looks better with the reddish pink color here that we have in our clouds. Next, I'm going to go to the green channel. Now we had some greens here in the dock, but there aren't really any other green colors in the image, so I'm going to decrease this green. So I don't want to take this too far, but I do think that looks a lot better with the magenta color that we have in the clouds. And last, let's go to the blue channel, and I'm just going to drag upward slightly. What a great difference this has made. It definitely looks like it blends into the image better. Here's the before and the after of adjusting those colors. The last thing I want to do is increase the saturation of the dock. So I'm going to add an HSL adjustment. And then I'm just going to increase our saturation. I think around 14% looks pretty good. Now I'm just going to rename this layer. And then we can go ahead and close up these groups. So I think that the dock is blending in quite nicely here. However, you may have noticed that we have a sunset going on in our background right here. If we're having a sunset over here, then that means the light is coming from back here. Because of that, we should have a shadow being cast behind our subject. So let's go ahead and add one in. To start, let's make a selection of our subject. I'll make sure that I have the dock layer selected. Then I'll go ahead and grab the selection brush tool. And then I'll just click to make that selection. I can see I've selected a bit too much here, so I'll hold down Alt or Option to remove that. All right, with that selection made, now we can paint in this area to create our shadow. However, I don't want to paint directly on this layer, so I'll go ahead and add a new pixel layer. So with that new pixel layer selected, I'm going to grab my paintbrush tool so that I can paint in a shadow. Now, I don't want to paint in black. I think that will look too harsh. So I'm going to grab my color picker and I'm going to select this dark blue color that's right here on our subject. Then I'll click on the sampled color to apply it to my paintbrush. And now I'll go ahead and paint this in. Now that we've painted that in, I'm going to go ahead and deselect by pressing Command or Control D. Then I'm going to grab the Move tool. The first thing I want to do to this shadow is flip it upside down. So I'm going to right click, then go to Transform, Flip Vertical. Then I can go ahead and drag this downward so that the edges of our shadow match up to the edges of our subject. And I'm going to go ahead and have them overlap a little bit. Next, I want to fix the perspective. Right now, the shadow is just going straight down. I want to make it look more like it's sitting on top of the dock. 
So we need to have the edges match. So I'm going to grab the perspective tool and I'm just going to drag out these handles. I want this line to be parallel to the dock and I'll do the same on the other side. Then I'll press apply. Okay, so now that our shadow is in place, let's blend it in better. First, I'm going to change our blend mode up here from normal to multiply. Now you can see the lines of the dock showing through. I'm also going to lower the opacity. I'm going to bring this to around, I think around 55% looks pretty good. We can clearly see a shadow here, but now it's not quite so intense. Next, I'm going to soften the edges of this shadow to make them look a little more fuzzy. To do that, I'm going to go to our filters. Then I'm going to add a box blur filter. I'm going to increase the radius and you can see that this really softens up our edges. So depending on how harsh your lighting is, you can have less of a blur or more of a blur. I'm going to bring our shadow here to 11 pixels. All right, we're almost done with the shadow. To finish this, I want our shadow to gradually fade out so that the shadow looks darker as it's closer to our subject and then it's less intense back here. To do that, I'm going to select our pixel layer and then add a mask to it. Then with the mask selected, I'm going to grab our gradient tool. Then I'll click and drag and you can see that where the color stop is white, we still have the shadow fully visible. And as it gradually fades darker and darker toward black, it starts to disappear on our mask. All right, I think the shadow is looking really good. So I'll go ahead and rename this layer. Now, before we fully finish with the dock, I want to make it look like these clouds are overlapping with the dock. So I'm going to go to our docks mask. Then I'll select my paintbrush tool and I can paint in black on this mask to remove parts of the dock, which will reveal the clouds. Just make sure that you have your default colors. So I'll press D to get black back. And now with a nice low flow paintbrush, I can gradually add these clouds over the dock. Very nice, that looks very mystical. We've now finished adding in our subject and the shadow. So with these main features out of the way, let's have some fun by adding in some extra details. We'll start by adding a moon to the sky. Here's our image of the moon. I'll go ahead and copy this by pressing Command or Control C. Then I'll go back to our document and press Command or Control V to paste it in. I'm going to click and drag this to the top of our layers. Then I'll grab the Move tool so that I can shrink down this image. Now I'm going to make a selection of the moon. This should be pretty easy since our moon is a nice pure white color up against a dark background. To do this, I'm going to use the Flood Select tool. This tool lets you select an area that has the same color. Make sure you have Contiguous checked on, and then you can click on the moon. If you don't have Contiguous checked on, it will select all of the white in the whole image. But if Contiguous is checked on, it will only select the white that's touching. With the moon selected, I'll go ahead and add a mask. Then I'll press Command or Control D to deselect. With that nice and selected, I'm going to select the moon layer and the move tool so that we can move this moon in place. All right, I think that looks pretty nice. Because the moon looks so good as it is, I don't think we need to adjust the colors or the lighting. So that was very simple. 
I'm going to rename this layer. So the next thing that I want to do is add some noise to the whole image to give it the same texture. If we zoom in here, you can see that the clouds have quite a bit of noise. But as you zoom around the rest of the image, you don't see that same level of noise. So to even this out, I'm going to add noise and paint it on the areas that need it. To do that, I'll go to our filters and then select add noise. I'm going to click and drag this to the top of our layers. Then I'm going to increase the intensity quite a bit. With the intensity so high, we'll easily be able to see where we're painting as we add this in. So I'm going to press Command or Control I. This will invert this mask so that the noise is being applied to nothing. So now I can take my paintbrush tool and with full flow and painting in white paint, I can go ahead and add this noise to strategic areas. Now, obviously this is way too much noise, so I'm going to double click on the add noise filter and I'm just going to bring down this intensity. I think somewhere around 10% is nice. You can see we have some noise added here. It's not quite as intense as the clouds, but it does help to even out the noise across the image. So now that we've added our noise, the last steps that I want to do is I want to adjust the light and colors of this whole image. Let's start with the light. I'm going to come to our adjustments and then add a levels adjustment. Then I'm going to add a little bit of extra contrast to the overall image. So I'm just going to bring the black level over a little bit and I'm going to bring the white level over a little bit. If I turn this off, you can see what a difference this has made. Here's the before and the after. Adding that contrast just makes the sky and our subject pop a little bit more. And the final thing I want to do is add some color grading. In the beginning with our plan, I wanted to make sure that we had nice blue shadows and pink highlights. So let's emphasize that with a gradient map adjustment. This adjustment lets you add specific colors to your shadows and highlights. I'm going to delete this mid-tone node. And now we can adjust the colors in the shadows and the highlights. So I'll start by clicking on the red shadows node, then I'll click where it says color, and I'm going to make this a nice deep blue color. Then I'll come to our highlights node, and I'm going to change this color to a nice light pink color. Obviously this looks a bit too intense, so I'm going to change the blend mode. So up here, I'll go ahead and change this to Overlay. Then I'm going to bring down the opacity of this layer. So now you can see the before and after of that gradient map adjustment. And with that, we're done. After all that work, this finished product looks so good. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next Affinity Revolution tutorial.